New Zealand has recorded one new confirmed case of COVID-19 after three days in a row of no cases. And the new case is linked to the Marist College cluster in Auckland and was identified through follow-up testing of the school community. The person who tested positive for, uh, first had symptoms nearly two months ago but had a negative test previously. The result now is considered a weak positive and the person who's been in isolation through the lockdown period is not considered infectious. Marist College says it still considers it to be safe for students to return when the school opens on Monday. Now, joining me now to help us understand how this all works is microbiologist Dr Susie Wiles. Hi Susie, can you just... Hi. Can you explain to us, this is obviously unusual, this cluster, I think was first first person tested positive at the end of March, we're so far down the track, what does it mean to get a, another positive test associated with that same group? Okay, so this is not unusual at all. What we know about people who have COVID-19 is that they um, they can shed uh, or they can have the virus, bits of the virus in their body for quite some weeks after they've recovered. So the test that we use here in New Zealand looks for the genetic material of the virus and it can pick up the viable virus when people are infectious, but it can also pick up these little bits of essentially broken down virus that people can have in them for a long time after their body has, you know, done the job of clearing the virus. So this is what one of those cases, the, the case today is. It's picking up that genetic material that's not a viable infectious virus, just the kind of dregs, and people can be like this for um, for many weeks. And it's also probably why the person tested negative before. So uh, it can, you know, you can have a little bit, and then you can you can basically test positive and negative and positive. And this has been seen overseas in those bits of the um, the bit of the infection after you've already recovered and you're no longer infectious. So then the situation where they had symptoms um, nearly two months ago but returned this negative test, should we be worried about that? Um, again, so some people don't always test positive. I mean, most people do, um, but there are some people who have tested negative, and that's why they are generally considered probable cases because the doctors who say they've got all the signs and symptoms, they have, you know, they're associated with other cases, um, but they haven't been able to get a positive test. And that's sometimes just because um, there are some people that you have to do a much more invasive test to get positive, and that's by essentially putting liquid into their lungs and then drawing it back out again. And so, so it's, yeah, this is, this is all well known, um, uh, you know, to people who understand the testing and isn't any cause for concern. Does it raise any questions about the effectiveness of the test that we are using? It's the, it's the best test there is, so that's the first thing to say. Um, and we know that, that people will test negative, um, a very small portion, and that's why they have this probable category as well, so that they can um, you know, treat somebody as though they have COVID-19 even if they test negative. So when they say it's a weak positive, what do they mean? Because this is the second weak positive. There was another case that surfaced in, in the extended community um, school testing program. So what does it mean, weak positive? I think it just means that it is from this extended period where it's not infectious virus. Um, it is just, uh, uh, you know, from the kind of the, the, the material of the, of the um, essentially dead virus rather than um, it being infectious. Is it possible that the virus is still circulating within the school community? Um, only if uh, people have been breaking their bubbles um, and allowing it to transmit. Um, so that's why all of us, you know, it's been important for all of us to, to, you know, stay away from people that were not in our bubble. And the idea was that if there was any virus in that bubble, it would circulate through the people um, and then they would recover and no longer be infectious. So providing everybody's been following all the rules, um, this, is, this is the state that we should all be in. So Maris has had the school forensically cleaned since the initial outbreak and it's opening up next week. I mean, would you be happy to send a child along to that school under the circumstances that you see now? Yes, absolutely. Again, this is not somebody who's infectious. This is an evidence of an infection um, that was part of that cluster. Uh, so, um, you know, providing everybody has been doing what they should have done, which is being in isolation, which this person has been, and then there should be no more, um, no more circulating. And I think, the, you know, there was a case that was associated with a bubble breaking, and that was that was very early on in, in our lockdown. So, they, all of these cases show why it's so important that we had to follow the rules. 
understand. So now, this is our first weekend at Level 2, but I do n- notice and sense a nervousness in some people about getting out and about at the weekend. I mean, what advice would you give to people about moving around and maybe getting a bit more social at Level 2? This, so all of the things apply around social distancing, around or physical distancing, around us washing our hands, you know, staying in small groups rather than being in big groups. And one of the things that I would caution a little bit is also um, that we need to uh, avoid really noisy places. Um, so one of the things that's coming up from lots of the clusters uh, overseas, but also the clusters here, is that in environments where people are having to shout and maybe they're singing, and, and that they're, those are really good opportunities for transmission. Um, and so I would say that, you know, I'd ask restaurants to make sure the music's kicked down, so people don't have to shout to be heard, you know, to hear each other at a table, um, and that people refrain from activities like singing and things um, just for a little while longer. Interesting. Hey, thank you, Susie. Thanks for your advice. That is Dr. Susie Wiles, microbiologist there.